justice at the validation meeting on budgeting for small scale women farmers. This is a validation meeting on the study on budgeting for small scale women farmers in Oyo State. It is part of applied budget work being done by CSJ. But you don't have a copy? Okay, you get one, please. So sorry about that. It is part of applied budget work being done by CSJ in collaboration with the small scale women farmers to provide an empirical basis for advocacy and engagement of state actors on improved service delivery in the agriculture sector. Nigerian governments in the last 10 years at the federal and state levels have been allocating very low sums to agriculture below the 10% commitment in the Maputo Declaration on Agriculture and Food Security. Across the sectors, the votes for recurrent expenditure, especially the personnel votes, are usually drawn down, while capital votes are released when recurrent and statutory expenditures have been fully paid for. Considering the prevalent poor revenue and macroeconomic forecasts at federal and state levels, the variance between projected and real realized revenue is usually wide. For instance, the federal real realized revenue in 2018 was 45% short of projection. Thus, the capital votes for agriculture have hardly been fully released. This is further complicated by a system where released, released sums of budgeted funds may not be cash backed, and when cash backed, may take time due to bureaucratic lethargies to be utilized. This is the background to challenges faced by smallholder and small scale women farmers, whose issues are hardly addressed in the agriculture budget. Nigerian budgets are crafted as, as gender neutral documents and refuse to take cognizance of the social, historical, cultural, religious, and diverse challenges specifically affecting smallholder women farmers. This leads to gender blindness in budgeting. These challenges include limited access to control and ownership of land, very low capital base, and poor access to credit and farming inputs, such as fertilizers and chemicals. Poor, poor access to gender-friendly equipment needed to reduce and remove drudgery from farming while improving productivity. The implication of the foregoing is that SCWF face double jeopardy. They get a very small portion, a very small proportion of the already bigger agricultural budget, which even if fully released will not solve the challenges facing the sector. Extension services are hardly available to translate research findings and the products of various research institutes for the benefit of SCWF. Also, there is no strong link between the work of the research institutes and local communities of farmers to the extent that farmers are not necessarily ready or takers of the research findings for improving agricultural productivity. Nigeria's commitment to climate smart agriculture as part of its nationally determined contributions, which have been costed under the Paris Climate Change Agreement would have greatly benefited SCWF if it has been implemented. Again, again, extension services would have played a role, a key role in the dissemination of the requisite knowledge and information on climate smart agriculture. The focus on funding for agriculture has been on the votes of the Ministry of Agriculture. But the, but the bigger picture shows that funding for agriculture can also be found in the votes of several research institutes outside of the agriculture ministry. Special intervention funds domiciled in the presidency and in the Central Bank of Nigeria. Sustainable Development Goals, formerly Millennium Development Goals. Ministry of Women Affairs, constituency projects of legislators, Ministry of Water Resources, including the votes of the River Basin Development Authorities. Faculties of Agriculture in the universities through the Ministry of Education, Ministry of Power, Works, and Housing and Labor, etc. The coordination and harmonization of these public funds to produce targeted, 
targeted optimum value for money results for the poor, especially SCWF, has been a missing link in the quest to improve farming livelihoods. Considering the goal of the Small Scale Women Farmers Organization SWAR Fund to end the cycle of poverty among smallholder women farmers and to stop all forms of discrimination against them, the foregoing challenges can be located around Nigeria's obligation to respect, protect, and fulfill the right of SCWF to an adequate standard of living, encompassing the right to work, food, etc., and to take steps within the maximum of available resources for the progressive improvement of their productivity, which will lead to improvement in living conditions. A detailed list of problems and challenges at the federal level and in the focal states are available in the Swafon Charter of Demands. Some of them, like good feeder roads, are not specific to the needs of SCWF, but generally for the opening up of poor rural communities and improving their infrastructure. On behalf of the Center for Social Justice and our partners in Swafon and the International Budget Partnership, I welcome you to this validation meeting. Thank you very much.